listening to Mending Minds from Link Online, the podcast where we delve into the latest advancements in research in neurointervention. I'm your host, Dr. Nantia Sujitjantarara, and in this series, we'll be discussing cutting edge technologies and their implications on the future of medical treatments. In each episode, I'll be joined by an expert guest who will share their insights and experiences. This program is supported by Medtronic. Let's get started. Hi everyone, in this episode of Mending Minds, we are going to focus on dual antiplatelet therapy after flow diverter treatments for intracranial aneurysms. And to discuss this, I have Dr. Gildas Karoff with me. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. So before we get started, could you please give us a little introduction of yourself? So I've been working in Paris in the team of Professor Jacques Morel Laurence Pell for more than 10 years now. Part of my PhD was focusing on surface modification, and now I am directing my research into anti-thrombotic management. Could you share your current practice for dual antiplatelet therapy at your center? So sure I can, but I cannot say, and I have no evidence to say, that it's better than yours. So we use Ticagrelor. I am convinced it is better than Plavix. Is it better than Prasugal? I cannot say. We are happy with it, but we, we lack evidence. We switch from six months, uh, from three months of DAPT to six months. We are quite happy with the results, but we know that increasing DAPT lens can increase the bleeding risk, can increase the cost, can be sometimes very annoying for patients. So this was the starting point, this question of my collaboration with Medtronic. So today, the practice is very widely among centers, as you mentioned. Why do you think there are still no precise guidelines and what criteria should be considered when defining a protocol for each institution? So defining a DAPT protocol is very complex because you have many parameters and we have evidence for none. So those parameters are the starting day, molecule types, are you going to use Ticagrelor, Prasugrel, or you name it? Aspirin dose even varies among centers. Aspirin duration, I know that in the US people tend to use it and give it for life. We don't. And finally, you have the epithelance. And all of these, you mix it, and it makes it very complex. And as long as we don't have evidence, we cannot suggest and make recommendations. Can you tell us the impact of coding or surface modification on dual antiplatelet therapy? So I'm a believer. I really think that coatings and surface modifications has a positive impacts on our treatment. So when I was at UMass at Mangunis's lab, I worked on that and we showed that, for example, phosphorylcholine surface modification reduced thrombogenicity and also decreases the neo-intimal hyperplasia rates. I don't think we should change our practice regarding DAPT based on that. I think surface modification is a plus uh, towards safety and it increases the safety of our procedure and I think it's already huge. Could you elaborate on what the SHIELD technology is? So the SHIELD technology is based on phosphorylcholine. Phosphorylcholine, as you know, is an hydrophilic component of the outer membrane of the red blood cells and it's Covently bound to the surface, to the struts of the flow diverter here. So as I said, it reduces the platelet activation on the surface of the stent. It decreases the neo-intimal hyperplasia rates. So that's very important for us. And also it helps with the delivery of the devices. And that's also very important for us. I have been using shield technology for many years and I'm very happy with it. So you are involved in Inspire Registry. Could you tell us a little bit more about the finding and the public results? The analysis is still ongoing. First, the Inspire Registry, it's a real life, large registry. And here we are focusing on flow diverter treatments and results uh, using the SHIELD technology. The goals were also to get numbers from real life regarding risk, because I think it's very important when you speak with your patients to be able to have uh, numbers based on uh, registries, because it's not numbers like you make in your mind, because sometimes we have false impression, and I think we all think we are very safe. But so here we have numbers, and also it's important to, for you to define your strategies when you are doing the case planification. Also, I think it's very important to get those numbers to define further trials because it will be 
very important to get those numbers to define the number of patients, for example, we have to include in those trials. So the main result, I think, is that the safety is excellent. If we look at post-discharge ischemic stroke risk, it's less than 2%. And if we look at post-discharge bleeding risk, it's less than 1%. And it might be thanks to the shield technology. And finally, based on the data you have, what are your current recommendations on dual antiplatelet therapy? Is there a possibility that we could shorten the duration? You said you do six months currently, is that right? So we have to be very cautious. In this analysis, we didn't find any difference when we compared less than six months and more than six months of DAPT. But these results are obviously biased because it's a retrospective analysis. And also I was very surprised because when we looked at those 700 procedures, the median DAPT time was six months. So people tend to give DAPT for quite a long time. So we have to keep this in mind when we look at the result. I think I would recommend six months DAPT. For sure, I would not recommend longer than that. And I have two key messages. I think it's very important to consider the specificities of each case. Is it a proximal aneurysm? Is it a distal one? I think it's very important because it might change what is needed for your patient. Is it a bifurcation aneurysm or not? I think we have to go deeper into an analysis because, for example, maybe a proximal ICA aneurysm would require three months of DAPT, a distal pericalosal one, probably more. And the second point, it's very important to base your DAPT discontinuation on imaging and on quality imaging, and I mean DSA. Because with precise imaging, you will be able to depict like breeding modifications that we see, or a severe neontimal hyperplasia. And if you find it on DSA, maybe for those patients, you have to extend the duration of the APT uh, treatment. So I think that's key. We have good quality imaging. We have to need it. We need to use it to adapt to the treatment. And just to clarify, when you say six months, you mean you stop both of the dual antiplatelet therapy? No, you stop one. Ah, gotcha. You stop one. Because you said that you don't believe. We, we stop one as well in the United States. But for you guys, you also keep... Aspirin. We keep aspirin, but at one point, the goal is to stop aspirin too. And it used to be at 12 months for many years. And for sure, I think we have to stop it at one point because for patients, it's not nothing Mm -hmm. to keep aspirin for life, especially if you are 30, 35. And from our experience, it's possible because we always stop aspirin at one point. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and insight. Thank you. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank Medtronic for giving me full access to the data of the Inspire registry, trying to optimize and provide better care for our patients. Thank you. 